Okay, welcome everybody to our uh, another budget workshop. Tonight we're going to go through police and gen and our general fund um, line items, and that'll be that's it for this evening. And any other discussion that is needed. So I'd like to start off the meeting with the Pledge of Allegiance, please. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> okay, everybody should be able to see the police one up on the screen. Uh, be quite honest with you, I didn't want to do a lot of talking tonight. I had some surgery done today and I got a split and headache, but I do want to uh, go over one of the lines, and if Pete doesn't have the information, I can get through it. But okay. all right, so Pete, I want to I want to start start off with talking about the Village Patrol line. Okay. Okay, and for the spreadsheets that you got, you would see it salaries going from two hundred twenty five thousand to three hundred thirty nine thousand two hundred eighty six. And I want to explain that line item for you because what right. one of the things that came out of police reform committee was there people were very concerned that there was disparities between the village police, sheriff's office, and state police, you know, when we were not on duty. And they would really like to see either a common agreement among the agencies so that everybody was treated the same way by the same police agency all the time or add additional resources to our police department. So I asked Pete to look at this and he did. He did an analysis and I'll take you through that analysis and then we can have the discussion. Um, so the reason for the 339,000, it really starts out with we added $81,536 to the prior year line which includes one person, seven days a week, 365 days a year. So that's worst case. We did several other analysis. The next one was $34,944. I'm giving you these facts. You don't have them, so you're, if you want to write them down, 34944 which would be one person for three days a week. Next. Below that would be 23,500 for in the summer only three and a half months, having a person on every night for three and a half months. And then the last was 10,080, which would be weekend only for three and a half months. So the range went from 81,536 to 10,080. And I wanted to put in the worst case so that we could have this discussion about where this is. And then there's still in the other option. The other option was as part of the police reform committee, uh, we're recommending to start with another committee to start doing the deeper dive into all of the issues that we brought up and come, you know, come back with recommendations and policies and procedures, et cetera. Uh, obviously that committee hasn't started yet. Our committee did the recommendations. The other option is we do nothing until we form that committee and put this on the committee to make a recommendation back to us. And if we do that, it would stay at the, actually not the 225,000, it would go to 229,500, which includes the one and a half percent that we've used for everybody else. I hope that was clear. Yeah. Any question, everybody understand that? I got a question, a newbie question. When uh, when we don't have our police officers on duty and it's either the sheriff or state troopers, are, are we being charged for that service by those other agencies? No, no. we're not, Vanessa. OK. Yeah. So, you know, the, you know, they pick up our area just like all like they pick up the, like they do the town all the time, et cetera. So. They're dispatched to here. They're not really particularly patrolling here. They do drive through and set up stuff, but um, they're not full time here in the village like our police are. And do we know if the town would be interested in uh, 
you know, having our local village police additionally uh, have pick up additional hours, additional service and coverage rather than state or county and, uh, you know, share those, share that additional coverage with us. So the town, we, we discussed it, the town budget was done in November, December. Mm -hmm. They passed their budget in January. Uh, Pete and we met with the town and gave them a proposal because our rate went up. If you remember yep. a few board meetings, we passed our, we upped the rate for town coverage. And so they kept us at the same, I forget, whatever dollar amount and they're gonna be using less. So they did not go for more police coverage. Um, in the town to be able to us to offset this cost. It's something that could be negotiated with them going forward, but it's not in their budget now. So and it hasn't been discussed as an option. I'm sorry, Vanessa, what? It hasn't been discussed as an option. N no, for them to pay additional coverage. Okay. Because because our commit our committee really went through this after they had already passed yeah. their budget. Okay. Yeah, so that you know we're out of sync in terms of budget cycles. Right. Uh, we're also out of sync in in terms of local um, policing coverage because the amount of coverage that we do for the town is wildly different than the amount of coverage we do for the village. Oh yeah, we only yeah. do like two. What is it? Two shifts a week? It's what yeah, is it? two, yeah, twenty four hours. Yeah. Yep. yeah, it's not much, and and because we raised the rate uh, to cover our costs this year. Um, that they budgeted around 50,000 roughly. So they're going to get l less, you, you follow me, because right. we charge more, they're going to get less shifts. But that's going to come into play more along in their fiscal year, more like in September, October. I'm trying to keep the same amount of shifts, but that money will go a lot faster because of the higher rate we're charging them. And so just so everybody knows, if they call us and want us to do work outside of the assigned shift, we bill them. Yes, correct. Right, Brand so... New Yes. Yeah. If they call us and say, listen, we're having a trouble, we need somebody to pick up a couple more shifts to cover patrolling at the town park, that's a billable service and they get billed for that service as we use it, as they use it, excuse me. So I do have a question and a thought, and I'm leaning towards not including the money in the budget and seeing what a committee brings forth, because my question is, do we need another dispatcher or or somebody like that? I know that Sergeant Dunn talks a lot about there's a lot of back office work that has to be done, and that pulls our that pulls our patrolman off the line. Would be we'd be better served by having somebody who'd be basically work in the back office so those guys would be out more frequently. Yeah, yeah. So Rick, that's a good question because we Pete and I have discussed that several times mm -hmm. about trying to bring in additional dispatch because as you know Danielle does that from eight to eight to three every day Monday eight to three to every day she's kind of she's our dispatcher as well as the police clerk and we after three o'clock we do not have dispatch coverage except for the officers who are on duty right and in the state police and the calls come into the station they roll over and go to the state police and they dispatch us so right. it's a it's a cost saving thing but i did not put any money in the budget for a dispatcher this year that's something right. that i could look into pretty quickly it's it's more along the lines of and and honestly for everybody now the, the biggest and gary's gotten this too the biggest feedback i get from the community is a lot more on the weekends you know daniel works five days a week is when our guys are out on the road uh saturday and sunday on both shifts you know there, there isn't anybody at the station to answer the phone it does roll over and they dispatch us and that's it it's always been that way the phone system set up that way and it's always been, it's always worked that way. So if we ever want to get to a more personal contact, you know, with the community, it, it does, it does, it, it is nicer for the community to have somebody there to answer the phone. There's no doubt about it. Um, versus that going to a trooper and then the trooper sending the call to the computer in the car or over the radio. So. Yeah, it's also, I mean, to just to be blunt, it's also nice to be able to walk up to the local police office. Right. Correct. And police department and you know and talk to someone um, yeah. and being able to do that on the weekend is is an advantage correct um, yeah so that's something that we have we you know we've talked about we just haven't gotten i haven't put a number to it i can i can get a calculator out and and put a number to it. and then then you're talking about getting another part-time person um and no, oh, just another part-time person for either just a one shift monday through friday are we talking just weekends so there's a way to figure it out it wouldn't take that long to, to put a number to it and then you're talking about um 
again, part-time, so many hours a week, you'd go through the county because they have a list uh, established for part-time dispatchers in the county. Um, that's how they do it in Hyde Park and other agencies. Got it. Um, so just, just, sorry, just, just, just to double check, we currently don't ha have our police officers on the streets between what, 11 p.m. and 6 a.m.? Is that what it is? 11 p.m. and 7 a.m. They get off at 11 unless they're tied up on something. Yeah, so from 11 to 7, correct. So what happens is, so everybody's aware, the state police um, return for their rules and regulations. At, and in the evening, uh, they put two troopers in. So what they do is they put two troopers in one car. So at a specific time every night, depending on which shift it is, they they put they they have troopers out all single riding, and then it happens they're usually around 11. It's either 10 or 11. Then both then two troopers will go. They'll meet at the station, and then two troopers ride the evening shift or the midnight shift, I call it, and they ride together. That's their policy and procedure. That's how they do it. And they and so really you have sometimes one or two cars, mostly one car covering the areas of the Northern Duchess, which is basically Hyde Park, Statsburg, Rhinebeck, Red Hook, Tivoli, all the way up through Red Hook, up to the county line, and then all the way out east to Pine Plains. And then the sheriff's office has a car 24 hours a day, but it's one car, and that one car covers what they consider zone one, which is all of the, from the county line all the way down to um, Statsburg, and as far east out as the Pine Plains light. So in the evenings, you do have one troop car and one deputy covering all of those towns from the county line, the northern county line, down to basically Hyde Park. So just so you're aware, that's how that works with mm -hmm. them. Wow. And how many cars do we usually, or how many offers do, officers do we usually have on during a single shift? Yeah, so depending on the day, if we have a town in a village or an SRO or some other special town, so normally, um, like tomorrow, we have a day shift, you know, 7 to 3, 3 to 11 on the village, and then we have a town shift in the morning from 7 to 2. So I'll have two cars on tomorrow, one for the village, one for the town, but the town's only 7 to 2 instead of, instead of a full eight hours. It's only, that's what they get, because um, the money doesn't go that far with, with yeah, uh, I get that. So, so, you, so usually for, for Rhinebeck, there's only one car, one car at any given time. Correct. No, correct. no there's really two cars, right? Well, well, there's two. Well, yeah, not including two mid, cars. but yeah. So there are days where we have two cars, correct? Um, that's not including if we have somebody um, going to the school SRO. So you can remember, I forget to tell you, those Canter Beth, they they split up the SRO, they go to the school, so they grab a car and go to the school. So there could be some days where it's myself, the officer in the village, and somebody at the school in a town in a town shift on. Got it. I made that clear. Okay. So, so that. but in general, it's two it's two cars unless they're patrolling for the town or at SRO. Right. Oh, okay. That's what we have. Yep. Got it. So, so to go from two car from so to go from generally two cars in just the village to one and then like whatever state slash county sheriff is wandering around yep. to just one state car and one county car covering a much larger oh. piece of property. Yeah. Like that that's a pretty dramatic reduction in 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 mana in force absolutely between 11 to 7. okay yes. yeah a lot of people uh, there's a lot of people in the community that some people get that and some people don't some people really don't know that that and when i explain that to people they're like wow you know there's like oh and if that deputy's in bard college or tivoli on a call and that trooper's in the statsburg area there really is nobody in between it, unless something else happens and they pull a car from a different zone right i i don't think the town residents understand what little local coverage they have either but they uh, for you right brant they don't i get i get a lot of calls and i've done this with gary uh, every day almost every day that i'm there i get a call from people in the town whether it's in ryan or a different part of the town and if i don't have a town car on and it's not an emergency i give them the state police or, or i transfer the call myself you know we take the information we transfer it to them and i do get feedback and people in the town saying you know why do we have to wait and why do i have to give the state police you know that does come up there's absolutely um, and really the village got into this a long time ago when we started doing the town many, many years ago was for that reason, you know, the, the state police car wasn't close or they would call us and complain like, Hey, why do I have to wait 30 minutes for a car to come from Hyde park or, and that's how, how it really started, you know, started out with lockouts yeah. and animals locked in cars at this grocery store, you know, those calls that are over the village line, but it also got to the point many years ago where the, the town was getting a service and the village taxpayer was paying for that. And that wasn't fair. So that's when many, many years ago, I worked out a contract and that's been like that ever since. So that way the town has, you know, they are paying for the service that we're providing. So. Is there money in this budget to write village all over our police cars? 
I didn't hear that question all the way. I said, I said the money in the budget to write village all over the police cars. And I'm actually kind of serious because I think people are not clear that they're being serviced by the village. Um, oh, I got you. Yeah. This, this, is that, yeah. Pete, this is that branding thing we talked about. Yeah, yeah. You know, so, like our uniforms say Rhinebeck Police. They don't say Village of Rhinebeck Police. Right, right. You know, the, the emblem on the door says Village of Rhinebeck Police. You know, this has got our, our signing on it. It's, it's Village. Um, you know, if, I, if you wanted to, I could put, I could layer like, all four cars up that way. It wouldn't be a big cost at all if that's what you wanted to do. In the years past, people have actually said, you know, wish there was something that they could put on the car. So, a uh, former administration would like, is the car on village or is the car on town? Because they see the car go by and people just don't know whether it's village or town. That is correct. Um, well, they don't, right. they don't even know if it's Red Hook or Hyde Park because they're all black and white. Right, right. We went standard, at least we did years ago. We, we brought the cars back to be in black and white versus the different colors that everybody had for a period of time. <laughs> so well, I want to get I, back to Pete. I want to get back to Rick's question. Yeah. You know, and yeah before we go on because you know the also in this committee i want to make it known that you know the committee was when it gets formed and when it does its thing is going to look at a very broad scope of issues mm -hmm. and it's not it's you know because we discussed should we have a part-time should we be full-time you know all of those discussions are going to come forward when we expand and go into more committee mode so i wanted to give you all the options because if, if we felt there was a need to do it now, but I was going to recommend what Rick recommended, who was also on the committee, that I would like to hold this number to the 229 and work with the committee to come up with a recommendation. But I wanted everybody to be aware of the discussion. I mean, I agree. And I also think that it, the committee might spring some, you know, more facts and more findings um, and may maybe induce the town to participate more. Yeah. Um, I did, yeah. Yeah. Um, I'd, I'd actually like to, I, I, I generally think that's a good idea, but I'd, I'd like to hear from Pete, um, Sar Sergeant Dunn. Yeah. Um, uh, what do you think? <laughs> um, so <laughs> the biggest complaint I get from people, I've been doing this now, I've been here for 20 years, is that, um, when we were over at the fairgrounds, we were too far away. People felt we weren't really in the village, even though we were in the village. And then we brought yeah. it back to the center of the village and everybody was kind of, uh, there were people grumbling about it and there were people more happy about it because we had access to us when everybody felt we were too far away. So basically the, I feel is um, you are getting to a point where, um, yes, it is still confusing in the town. And you know, I, from what I can do, I'm, and I'm being honest, what I do now is in, in operations and running the department, we're at a size where we're 14 people. Um, one officer is going to be retiring very shortly. Um, so we're going to have to hire a couple more people, even if we were to do an extra shift or two or whatever we want to put on. Um, but you're at the point where um, I'm, I don't want to not do the town, but I also would, in order to do that, and you have to put a lot more people on. I'd have to have more support staff. So you're really talking about expanding the budget a lot. Whereas in the village, I mean, I would like to start out with saying, hey, you know, eight hours a day, three times a week. I'd like to start off, even if the, we wait for this committee and we, we come up with some stuff and recommendations and whatever they want to do. But I'm, I, I get the more of the backlash is why aren't you there? That's what I get from community. Right. Like we, we call you and you're not there or we, you know, we after, and I had this conversation with a resident yesterday, like, well, no, after 11, you guys run around. And then uh, they got the state police to deal with, and it takes them forever to get there because they're, they could right. be in a different part of, in different of the town. So, yeah, that's the feedback I get from the community that I've been doing this a long time is that they want us there. They want us to be there after 11. So, I mean, I like to ease into it, not just right off the bat, say, bam, you know. So that's why we broke it down in different ways, maybe just doing it for so many weeks in the summer and break it down and say, hey, Memorial Day to Labor Day, this is what it costs. Like Gary said, 23500 5, 23, Or just do eight hours three times a week for those 15 weeks, which is 10000 You, you kind of ease into it instead of throwing this big number at everybody and trying to – and, of course, you got to raise the taxes. So – um, that's my feedback. I mean, I would like to do it in a little smaller increments so I can work my way into it. Cause like Gary and I spoke about the currently the officers we have are also working either their full-time jobs as other cops or their full-time jobs as firemen or their other, or other, whatever their other you know job is. And I'd have to get a few more people to try to also pick this up, which isn't a huge cost to hire people, but you still have the uniforms and the vests and all that stuff. So, I yeah. mean, that's the feedback yeah. I'm giving. I, I would like to see it eventually. I don't want to jump in like both feet right away, but I would like to say, yeah, 
the, the feedback I get from the community is, uh, we don't. And I get it from the town too. I get it from the people in the town. Well, why can't you just send somebody now? You know, and, and there's only so much money in the town budget. If I did it all the time, we'd eat through that money before August. You know. Yeah, I get that. So. Well, be- I mean, well, and, and that sort of speaks to the question that I was going to ask is, um, you know, having our police officers around in the evenings, at least on the weekends, at least during the summer, I. I I, I I hear that like the police commission is going to be doing a lot of thinking about a lot of stuff. Yeah. But um, I I do wonder if, and from what I understand, that is what the ten thousand dollars is is, yeah. you know, Friday and Saturday nights during the summer. Yeah. That's um, right. Yep. Every after, night. after I mean, eleven. After eleven. After right. eleven. Fifteen for fifteen, roughly fifteen weeks, three times a week. Yeah. Right. So. So I, I I do wonder if that is is at least a, a a good step for us to take, saying, okay, we've heard the confusion around the various, or not even the confusion, like we've heard the frustration that, I mean, like I, you know, I've experienced with my husband being an EMT. Sometimes they get to a scene and have to wait half an hour for the state police to show up yeah. in order to secure the in order to secure the scene for 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 the ambulance right mm-hmm. um so there's I, I i do think that we're probably on our way to having this be something that we probably end up doing and so taking the opportunity to do it um just even in advance of the committee sort of coalescing and starting to make recommendations just saying you know i, I feel like it's something that we can do <laughs> to, right. be, to be to be blunt yeah um like we've had a we've had a good year of committees doing a lot of really good thinking and it would be nice to be able to do something in response right for that year of work and obviously you know all sorts of issues are are coming to light and those are going to take the time that they take to resolve, but it would be nice to be able to come up with a way to make sure that our officers who know what we need from them and what our population wants from them Mm -hmm. are available to our population, at least, you know, on on the nights when we think that we're going to be busier. Right. Um, That, that, that's what I would encourage us to do. And, you know, $10,000 is not, $110,000. One hundred and ten thousand um, dollars. Right. So, I, and obviously, I don't know how that ten thousand dollars tumbles out in the overall budget picture. But that 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 is my thought. Okay. That is my thought. So, well, I, as far as the I overall budget, Brett, please. I just want to. I want, <laughs> doesn't want to get one in here. Um, I guess m- one of my questions would be if you had to choose between prioritizing putting a weekend dispatcher in the in the station, so there's somebody there to answer the calls, and I would hope catch up on some of the paperwork. Yeah. Versus running the night shift, which of those two, which of those two scenarios would you prioritize? I, I would try to do the patrol first because we still have the dispatch for the state police. So whether the call comes into the station and still rolls over, we're still the ones showing up on the call for those times we're there, and that's that's what I that would be first, and then and then after that, then I would work on the dispatcher part of it. Because I'd like to have the officer, the face on the the, the the feet on the ground, basically, is that we're we're the ones showing up instead of because the frustration I get is just like Lydia said is is they're waiting, you know they're waiting and waiting and waiting and then I the one person I spoke to the other day said yeah I, I you know they like to stay police there's nothing wrong with it it's just the fact that you know after eleven you guys run around and and they and one person knows everybody and they'd like us there so that's really the the feedback I get is that you know they'd like us to be there after 11 so again easing into it that's what i would do i would start with the patrol first and then and then go the then the dispatcher route second and this would be and this is just for the village just so just everybody the knows. Village. i'm not talking about the town no, no 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 this is just village it's got nothing to do with the town I, I just we're talking about village here alone not town so what i was going to say is we could this is a budget workshop we can put the 10 grand in now and then in, in April, when we have that, when we have to tighten mm-hmm. numbers and fi- we have seven sacred cows, we're going to decide uh, <laughs> the, the three sacred cows and so sacred, right? <laughs> then we can, you know, see if it survives the final tightening. Okay. Right. 
everybody's agreeable with that. That's I'm fine with that as well. Yeah, you know, we'll add ten thousand. Karen will add ten thousand eighty. Yep. In addition, now my question is: Did you say Gary, you got one and a half percent bumps in there? Yes, that's the two twenty nine five. Okay. And so it'll be the two twenty nine five plus the ten thousand eighty. Just so everybody knows, what you heard on the report the other night that our average salary, the salary was 23 that mm -hmm. Debbie presented. Karen did a, a a calculation, and our average salary is really 28.20 per hour. Right, we have older, yeah, we have older members who are at the top yeah. of the, the contract. But we need to correct that in the report. Yep. And that because it ch changes the dynamics a little bit. Correct. Right. And just so everybody knows, we have officers with you know, th plus 30 years, 33, 30, 28, 27. So that's why they're at wow. the, a little bit higher. And would you imagine that the one that's about to retire is probably going to be replaced with someone who's younger and therefore slightly cheaper? Yes, correct. That would be in the $24, $23 an hour range, correct? Okay. Yeah, it's good to know. And that's typically the way it works, Lydia. The only, yeah. problem, the only problem that we have is that... We get the younger who have experience, you know, but they're young. They're looking to get their ticket punched here and then they want to go full time somewhere else. So we do have a hard time retaining part time younger policemen. Yeah. Well, people we've, and, we've, and we put some stuff in the contract to give them bumps on, you know, if they stay if they stay longer, they get a bump after six months, a year and then two years. They get they get a small incremental salary increase to encourage them to stay. Is there ever a, an opportunity where we could hire someone full time to be a patrolman, or is that just like not a thing? We, well, Gary, I could take that one if you, you could. It changes my role a little bit. Uh, civil service, um, the guideline, the, the rules and regulations with civil service. Um, we did have a full time officer many years ago, um, Officer Imperato. And he was there. He stayed. I think it was over a year, and then he transferred to Bedford Police Department. So for, for the pay increase. So um, you can, but that seems to be the issue when you have a small department. Um, when you hire full time, they spend about a year or two for training, and then they go off to agencies making quite a bit more money. So it it kind of turn. It, it's a turnover, and that's the reason why that honestly that I've been here for a while and. I'm not going anywhere. So that's the disadvantage of having somebody that's full time is they take you up and leave and, and you're stuck with the administration part of it and somebody's got to do it. So right. You're stuck with the administration and not the longevity, which is kind of the point of the whole thing. Right. And, and just, I want to make another point too that this does not include Pete. Right. The payroll for the guys are different than my line. Right. Okay. Right. <clears throat> okay. All right. All right so thank I think, you. This is helpful. Yeah. All right. So are everybody in agreement? We'll add to 10,080 to 229.5 for now. Yep. Let's see where it shakes out. Yeah. Okay. All right. The next, the next line item was Executive Order 203. Uh, when we started in this study, we were really Pete was really banging out hours. And just yeah. just to remind everybody, Pete is a as a civil services 20 hours per week, but he never unfortunately gets the privilege of working 20 hours a week when he really sometimes would really love to. I would uh, love so, to. <laughs> so he spends a lot more time working. And when this police reform came up, we worked very closely with the civil service department to create a new position, uh, which is assistant to the mayor and get with special assignment it, that extended Pete up until Pete, I remember the end of April, April I think. April, right? April 30th. Yeah. Yeah. To be able to, put civil service hours against a different line item uh, so he doesn't violate his current time, which he's really right. spending. He was spending two thirds of his time working on the police reform and uh, our policy and procedures. So we created that line. Item. The reason it goes to zero is because it only extended up until April 30th. So I wanted to let you know that, you know, unless things change and we extend that, with another order, uh, with agreement by civil service, that line will not be there. But either way, it it works out with that's Pete's that's part of Pete's pay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, is there any chance that the governor is going to like extend this executive mm -hmm. order into another phase, 
and require more follow-up after this uh, April 1st deadline? Pete, do you want to answer that question? I would love to. Um, <laughs> we, had a, we had a meeting with the governor's office at weeks ago, and that question came up, and we did not get an answer. And a lot of the questions on that with his office were um, a lot of municipalities wanted to know where the money was for this. There's no reimbursement for my time or any agency's time to put all this together. The amount of money we spent on Lexapol to get our rules and regulations in back in line and all the time that I've spent. There are other agencies who have multiple people doing what I'm doing and there's no money for that. So the, the, answer, the answer is no. They did not tell us that the governor is going to come out with another order after the, after the, the first. Um, and there is not going the answer was they're not going to reimburse any municipality. Um, and if you and they also said if you don't get it in by April 1st, we are not going to give you any money. Your, whatever state funding you get for all your departments, if your plan isn't here, you're definitely not getting any money. So that was very clear to us that said, get it in, otherwise we're gonna we're not gonna give you any state funding. Yes. Um, and that's, so, this has been this has been very clear at the county, the state level, the county level, yeah. down to us. Our deadline has to be to the to the state on the desk by April 1st. Yeah. So that, that and there was and there's no reimbursement from the state. And we asked and agencies asked was well, is there going to be more? And and they just didn't they wouldn't give us an answer. So yeah. We don't know after that. If the governor gets the plans or somebody in DCJS or division or whoever he signs to go through them all and they don't like what they see, I don't know. I don't have the answer for you. We wanted to know and they wouldn't give us the answer. So it's it's, 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 it's sorry, I was just going to say it's an interesting question, though. I mean, whether or not it's executive order 203 is extended. But, you know, if we're going to have this police commission that extends into sort of a longer term role, um, I'm sure that that is not going to be, you know, none of Pete's time. And right. so I, I think we need to. Right. You, you think about that. That well, and Lydia, that's why I brought up that special assignment because that's the only way we can do that. Mm -hmm. We yeah. worked really hard with civil service to get that, and yeah. we could allocate his hours if we can get that extended by proving that what we're doing and how much it, Pete's effort is required to do that. So, okay. violating civil service has really been looked on really closely in the past year, mm -hmm. and. Yeah. Um, Pete was one of those that was in violation and we knew it and we were trying to figure out how to do it with all the extra work. And this was the option that really made it work for us. Okay. Should we, budget, well, should we budget something there? Yeah, what? I mean, even if it's not even if it's not related to executive order 203, should we be budgeting some some of Pete's time in, in there or, well, it, or it, not? It, this is the combination of Pete's time plus a salary line item. So. I okay. Mean, you can, but right now it expires on April 30th. We can, we right. always have his line item and we can always then budget time towards it. So it doesn't, we don't have to budget now is what I'm saying. Okay. We can okay. budget, we can just put his salary in there and hope that we're going to go forward and try to make that happen. Okay. All right. Because I don't want to budget against something we don't have approved. Oh, that's fair. Yep. All right. So that's why that line went to zero. Um, but you didn't put Lexapol in there. That's not that's not itemized under Executive Order 203. We already paid for that. Yeah, we we paid for that this budget this year. We found the money. The annual. But the annuals in the fees and not I didn't oh, get to in the, the fees. Budget. Okay, that's got the it. Fees, not employees. That have to yeah. be added to that this year. Yes. Executive Order 203, Vanessa only covers hours. I see. Okay. It doesn't cover any other miscellaneous expenses. But good question. All right, my jaw hurts. Pete, uh, can you sure. take over for a little sure, bit? Sure, sure, sure. So the village court, we go right down through this. The village court, um, we pretty much kept it the same uh, way. The court's going right now. It looks like in April and May, it's virtual. One judge is doing virtual. The other one is uh, doing in court for DA. So that's hopefully going to start to open soon, and they'll be able to start handling all the vehicle and traffic that the tickets have been coming in for the last several months. Um, that'll pick back up. So we kept that number the same. We're hoping that we're, the court shouldn't be scheduling any more. There may be just longer hours, but the way it's going to work for the officers, they get paid three-hour minimum. So that's why we left that the way it is. We didn't raise that at all. Uh, the town patrol, um, it, it again, the town goes from January to December. We go from June to, to May. So that's why that number is there. We left it pretty close to what it was. It's almost exactly the same. 
So um, it's just their end of it because we're charging them more, just they get less for what they have put away for it. Um, town court, same thing, leaving that, that number pretty close to the same. Um, it's just about the, the, unless something changes with them. And then again, we bill them for that. So if, if they were to do anything different, we would bill them and then they would have to figure out how to get the money for that, um, which should be the same. I don't see any reason why it's going to go up drastically. Um, school patrol. I have not had a chance because Albert and, uh, and so I talked. Can I jump in here on this one, Pete? Yeah. yeah. Um, so I met with the school today. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Albert got back to me today and I also met with him and, and her finance officer, Tom Burrell. Yeah. Uh, our SRO contract just got lost in the weeds with all the work they're doing. Okay. They intend, they intend to sign it at the new, at the new rate. Oh, okay. Yeah. So, okay. That's the short story of, of it just got lost and they're so they're so backed up with COVID and figuring out what's going to happen next with the state and getting us keeping the school running. It just got put onto the back burner. Okay. So we'll keep that the same. Like, and then well, I'll get a chance to talk to him and, you know, he wanted to keep it going. That's a little while ago when I spoke to him. So that's good. Yeah. Uh, no, they, they intend to want to keep it going. Okay. Um, so then after that is uh, my line item in there. We kept that relatively close. Actually, I think mine was down, obviously, because of COVID this year. I think it was down five or 6,000. So we kept that relatively the same. That didn't change. So um, one second, I need to, I'm sorry, I don't want to talk, but I want to jump in here. Yep. So, so everybody's clear, that 70,000, if we extend the Executive Order 203, a portion of those hours would jump up into that new line item, and that line item would drop down, but it would still be the same amount. Right. Okay. Okay. Yep. Got it. Um, police clerk, uh, that was Danielle's, um, with the same percentage of raise of girls get at the village hall. That's why that number is where it is. Uh, cleaner part-time. This is where, where we talked to Karen about, uh, since John Armando retired, we have now hired, um, uh, the, the company guys coming in once a week for $150 a week. Uh, it comes in on Mondays now. So this is the discussion I had with Gary about, um, they have somebody also working at the village hall. I'm very happy with Wilfred right now, but if that one, if, if you guys want to change that, just let us know. Um, 150 a week times, you know, the 52 weeks that will come to the roughly. You have to get my calculator out, but that's no, actually Pete. Pete. Yep. No, that doesn't include this contractor we hired. This is. Oh, it doesn't. Okay. Your, this is your percentage of the halftime person we have in the plan oh, already okay. to do. You know, you pay 35 percent. The okay. firehouse pays 15 percent, and we pay whatever the, the delta of that. This is assuming $20 an hour, half-time person, because the union only extended this agreement for us to use outside sources until May 31st. Oh, that's right. Remember that? Yep, I remember now. Okay. So this is this is your cost of the half-time person at your percentage if we hire, you know, when we hire a person to do cleaning, because it is a union position and we can't backfill it with anything else. We just were, we were given a, a, a pass till May 31st. Right. Okay. All right. Now we're on to equipment, which is, I'm looking across the line here. We made it uh, $10,000, which is what we had this previous year. So we kept that the same. Police grants. I don't so know. Of any just so everybody knows, that covers cameras, computers, right? You know that kind of stuff as well. Uh, police grants are usually hard to tell. I don't know of any on the horizon right now because there really is no money unless something pops up from the federal stimulus money. All right now, I don't know of any any grants in the horizon. Some, those are hard to pick. Sometimes I get something thrown at me in the middle of the year and then I, I apply for it, but I don't see anything. I don't have bulletproof. I've done bulletproof vests. That's usually paid for half by grants, but I wouldn't have that for another, another th actually three or four more years. So we don't have to worry about any of that. So fees, not employees. This is where we're talking about where the, um, these are all my vendors. This is where Safeco, this is where our operating system police pro, this is our live scan. This is where um, uh, Lexapol would come out of. So this year um, we're looking at 195. No, it's twenty-seven thousand five, Pete. Um, mm -hmm. My line got messed up. Yeah, that that I'm sorry. When we got we we didn't update the file right, and so oh. I'll bail you out here a little bit because what we discuss is here's where we're going to buy Police Pro. Mm -hmm. 
Right, and Police Pro is 16000 and we have enough money in the budget to spend 8000 out of this budget. And then remember, we were going to yeah, okay. pay the other 8000 next year because we could they, they'd allowed us to stagger the payment. Right, that's correct. Yep, I didn't realize. Okay, so my sheet's just a little bit different than yours. Okay. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry. It just didn't get updated. That, that should be 27500 Gary, you said Police Pro, Pro do you mean Lexapol? No, no. That's two separate things. Lexapol okay. is its own vendor and Police Pro is their own vendor. Police Pro is our operating system at the station, is what we put all, all along for us. That's where all our reports are generated and all our narratives, all that kind of stuff. And the reason we're doing Police Pro Upgrade is because it's been multiple years. And then also, due to the uh, police reform, the um, use of force. So everything has to be broken down to in tabs and has to be reported differently than it was. And also, New York State's doing away with um, uniform crime reports, which is what our version does now, where they're going to incident-based reporting. So I have to have the system upgraded to do the incident-based reporting on top of the uh, the use of force stuff. So that's why that's one of the main reasons we have to upgrade it. Yeah, this is almost a mandate. Uh, it is a mandate. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Actually, we're supposed unfunded to be unfunded. One at that. Yeah, they always, they always, <laughs> they, they always are unfunded. Yeah. <laughs> and then January 1st was a deadline for, yeah, for UCRs in there. And they're aware that agencies aren't going to do it right away. They give them a few months. But yeah, so whenever I can get this up and running. So right now, they're just accepting our use uniform crime reports every month, and they know eventually we'll get to IBR. So they don't hold your feet right to the fire, but they're not going to let you go more than a year out without getting that fixed. So. Perfect. All right, so let's see, fees, none, and please. We went to Milsonian's postage. Um, that stayed the same. Miscellaneous reimbursement, $500. Well, as long as your numbers are the same as mine. Utilities, I have 15.5 for utilities. Is this, this isn't just, this includes more than just the electric bill for the police station. Yeah, this includes the EV yep. stations in the back. Yes, it includes the EV stations, all the electric, and some of the utilities to the station. It's separate from the propane. Are we still getting, we're going to re, there's a uh, revenue item for the EV stations then? Because we still have some grant money left? Or? We have revenue, remember, Brant, we have revenue for the ones now over in the municipal lot of $4,000. Oh, oh, okay. We've, we've exhausted all the revenue for the ones behind. And what we talked about several months ago was doing them all together. So it doesn't okay. create confusion of paid. So we're losing money. a little on this. We we can't meter two of them. Or we can't meter. Yeah, we can meter. We can do whatever you want. We can meter two of them. We can meter all of them. We can, you know, we can set the rate. We can charge whatever we want. It's, it's, if you charge on this one, you're just going to push the volume over to the other one. Yeah, no, I get the it. The other one's still free. But it's um, still, it still still kind of stinks that we're yeah. subsidizing. So current, so I'm under just so I understand right. These, this is still the ones that are using behind the station. The people don't have to pay for. Is that correct? They correct. do not. That's they what we're they saying. do not pay yet. That's oh, right. Okay. All right. But, so, but if we, if they did pay, would this number would come down then, right, or not? Well, that number offset. would probably stay the same, but we'd have a revenue line item that offset it. Okay. Okay. But this figure has been high forever. I mean, I don't. There's got to be including something. Yeah. This you know what? Brian, I did a study on this, and I don't know if you remember. The problem is, even without the EV stations, the police station, because of its design and its use of electricity, is on a demand meter. And demand meters in utility company are two times the cost of a residential meter. Oh, okay. Oh, and, wow. And, and so, if you go over 12,000 kilowatt hours in any 15-minute period of a time, or whatever, I forget the exact number, I'd have to go back and look up, but they regulate you by 15 minute increments. And if you seed a certain rate in a 15 minute increment, that whole month gets charged at the higher premium rate. Gee whiz. Yeah, that's, that's, that's the way the utility, that's, I'm sorry, that's the way the utility works. And the police station has always been on a demand meter and always been on that rate charge. Wow. Yeah. Um, can we no it sucks yeah can we can we can we change it from a demand meter to i don't know no because else? we ex we exceed the limit of what they would wow. accept can so, we put solar panels on the roof on the south exposure <laughs> <laughs> yeah what 
I don't know what the difference would be. I, I've never known this. How, what, would, how much would it be different if they, people paid for the electric versus it being on the meter? Do we we'd know? Have to we could calculate it, but I don't know if you're going to get, it's not going to offset it by megabucks. Oh, okay. So, so Gary, question. Um, would a battery smooth those that, that um, draw and keep us below the threshold? No. No. In fact, the way they have the the uh, PSC is written it, even if you put a battery in, right, to offset some of your other loads, you know, we would still be above the demand rate because the battery is charged, right, and it's not being used at certain times. Long story, but the end of, end of the day is... <laughs> okay. No. Well, maybe, I mean, honestly, maybe, like, maybe when we're thinking about capital projects, we can think about solar panels for... For the police station, I, I mean, I, this may just be like total pie in the sky, but there's, I think there's something kind of lovely about charging electric vehicles with solar power. Um, too many trees, too many trees on that police building. Ay, bay. <laughs> you have panels on top of the of the of village hall. The village hall is filled. We have we're 99 full, panels yeah, we're up, full there up there Rick, I gotta get you up on the roof. There's 99 panels up. There's yeah, you can. 99 panels up there. They're all over. Yeah, you can you can see them from Google Maps. It's pretty cool. Okay, well, I mean they're not our trees, so if you cut down the neighbor's trees, I guess you get some light. Yeah, <laughs> and a little heat. Yeah. Um, that roof is not this, that roof, the layout of that roof. I I looked at it. Yeah. And the layout of the roof doesn't support that many panels the way it's cut up. Oh. Mm -hmm. Okay. On the on the good note, our propane has always stayed the same. We're very well insulated, so we only go through roughly six hundred dollars a year for, for propane. We very that's, a, that's incredible. That's, that's all we go. Through. That's it. Some yep. years less, so that stayed the same. But that's uh, good. That means we don't have that many outages. No. No. Um, fuel and gas. That's for gasoline for the police cars. Hopefully the price of gas uh, will start to slow down. It's been coming up quickly now. Hopefully it stays where that's based on state bid price. The town pays for it and the village reimburses us. So I'm keeping that number the same. And I will tell you, there have been way back when the gas was $4 a gallon, that number can change. I'm hoping it stays. It doesn't this year. It stays no, the same. Sorry, Pete, we did change it by 1,000. Oh, you we did? Up, we remember, I don't know if you remember the discussion. We upped it to 8,000 okay. only because we were expecting an increased cost in gas. All right. So you did go to really? eight. Okay. It's only we're only thirty eight hundred year to date, and we're two thirds done with the year, though. Yeah, but this year we haven't because of COVID. Our traffic volume has been down in terms of driving around, mm -hmm. and we've had no events. You know, all these factors, and, and we we've had really it. cheap gas, and we've had really cheap gas. And we haven't gotten yeah. the bills yet. Oh, and yeah, we're waiting. We're waiting. Karen just said we're waiting for the next big bill to come from okay. the from the town. Right. I, I just assume any town bill, there's a big lag. Oh, <laughs> they come in much yes. later. Yeah, they, they do. I don't know why. They also lag in paying us. Oh. <laughs> okay, so the next one is your insurance. Karen, going to speak to this one. This one, we're keeping it the same. Yeah. Uh, at least on my paperwork, it's 6000 like Yes, correct. That's staying the same. Okay. Um, insurance, workman's comp, that's staying the same on my form? Yep. Okay. Uh, repairs and maintenance. We knocked that one uh, down a little bit, right? We're four. We've only spent 25 because our cars are in pretty good shape. Um, it was in past years. We don't have a lot of older cars like we did years ago. Um, discretionary funds stayed the same at $300. So a lot uh, of stuff stayed the same. Pete, did you knock the, the repairs and maintenance? Did, what did you go down to on that? Uh, we four, went four. 4000 that's always a, you that know. That was on your sheet, Pete? Yeah, four is on mine. Yeah, that that's what I have to. Okay. Nope. Okay. So <laughs> the cars are in good shape. I, you know, I can't, I'm not, a, you know, I take care of them. So I'm hoping nothing majorly breaks. Um, and uh, discretionary funds, $300. That's staying the same. And then we get to the bottom and I have to go through these lines at the bottom. It was the. Part of the budget uh, to Gary and to Martina. I'm not Martina. Karen, um, the other new vehicle. And I'm not sure. I'm looking at. The, I'm not sure if my numbers are the same as yours. The way you're breaking this down, Karen. So that was the question I had. Okay, this should be the the long term debt. The established long term debt is what is what the schedule is. 
Okay. And um, yes, I did think that the police land was finished by the end of this fiscal year, but it's it's over mm -hmm. the next fiscal year. The the last payments early summer, so okay. we do have that. Some and summer twenty one or summer twenty two. Summer 21, it will be finished by the fiscal year 22. And the fire truck will start 22, 23. So it works on that, on that end. Gotcha. Okay. But well, the if, fire truck we also have covered because we have the increased coverage from the town for the protective district. Correct, right. So the fire truck is really covered by that. Well, then you'll then you'll have you'll be able to talk about the difference so, year. A little pat on the back. It was my idea to put the land in the ten-year bond ten years ago when I was on the board. Good job. <laughs> Thanks, Brent. Thanks, Brent. You're welcome. You're welcome. Thanks. And you're still here. And I'm going to get rid of it next year. So that's fantastic. <laughs> Forty oh, yeah. back in the bank. That would put us in the, before I could after June first. Uh, then we're in the money. Order a new vehicle. So did you want to talk about the last two items, Pete? Yeah. Yeah. Let's, or Gary. The, yeah. Let's talk about this. You're talking about on the, the command car. Yeah. You're right. So, yep. um, what we're proposing this year is we're going to be retiring um, 122, which is coming off, and then what we need to do, and what we've been talking about for quite some time, is adding similar to the firehouse where we have a command vehicle, we really need a command vehicle for the police that would be set up very similar uh, for police response and for emergency services. And now that that's the last two items, which is principal and interest, which it offsets because we already retiring one. Right. And can I just explain this eight to this eight two two seven these two are the last payments on the prior um, lease. So this 10 and 2300 is an estimate and, uh, and it's just taking the place of this um, payment that's complete, this five year lease mm -hmm. that's complete. Gotcha. Okay. Um, for police vehicle 122, is, is, is that vehicle gonna be fully retired or are we gonna be doing anything like we did with the um, former fire chief SUV and turn into the fly car, you know. Yeah, no, no. Well, here's my my plan is is right now that we're using that um, a little bit less because it's got close to seventy thousand miles on it, but it goes the hours on the oh, engine. That's a lot. Yeah, yeah, that's a lot. But it, it's it's mostly right now used for the school resource officer and like we have basketball games this year, so that's why I'd like to hang on just for a little bit longer for that kind of stuff because yeah. if it's not being driven like you know if it's just going into school functions if it's just going to the basketball games if it's just going to special events it's much easier on it versus being run every day so yeah. that's my plan um, okay and pete there's also times remember we've had to use this car when we have events yeah yeah we we put this car back into service at the event to you know be part of the patrol because we're yeah. adding a lot more officers yeah and, and due to the fact that when we do have center cloths and all your events, I'm usually, I need the four cars for posts and then I don't have a car. Or, you know, I'm, if a car goes in the shop, then I'm really in a, in a bind because then, yeah. then, then, then I'm stuck. And then, then I'm begging and borrowing from the state police and the sheriff's office to try to get extra vehicles from them. And the sheriff's office, we have to pay the state police, we don't, but it depends on their strength, tour strength. So, yeah. And, and, and this would be set up as a 911 command center. Oh, so just like Kyle's truck. Okay. Yeah. Well, except for sort of. police, more police eight driven than fire driven. That's all. Yeah. 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 But same so idea. It's called, okay. Sorry, newbie question. Command car, meaning it has special equipment in it to to be the one in charge. Like what's yeah. what? <laughs> sorry. It's the same as everybody else, but it's also still going to have the camera in it. You know, the, the mobile video camera system in it, just like all the other cars. I don't want to not have a car with that in it because that's our policy and procedure. So. That's going to be in it also, but also so, other stuff. Vanessa, what we should do is we should give you a demonstration of the fire chief's car. So you can see how a command center is set up. You open up the back gate. There's other, you know, you have you can virtually take all the radios that were out front and they get moved to the back. 
So you can actually run a command center from the back of the vehicle, have a display board, have the night, everything set up. It's how we set up our fire response car, okay. chief car as well. So really good to have, especially in an emergency or an yeah. event. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, well, this is, is this for events too? Does this, yes. would this be used at events? Yes. Oh, yeah. Yep. That's, that's the issue is that a lot of times when I'm on certain events, I don't, I don't have a car. So, or, you know, if, like I said, if a car's in a shop or I have them all tied up on posts, because that's where I have to have them, it just makes it harder. A lot of times I'll start in a car and then I'll end up on foot. Uh, without having a car because the car has to be at a certain location due to it's blocking a street or, or a parking lot or alleyway whatever it is i offered him a motorcycle but he turned it down <laughs> <laughs> yeah no thank you please tell me that motorcycle came with a sidecar nah. <laughs> <laughs> so that's uh that's the end of it unless karen less and so those just, numbers are a little bit different some little bit other information, just so you know, our our, our capital reserve fund uh, that we set aside money for is at thirty two thousand nine hundred, right. which includes the we have a five thousand dollar donation from the fairgrounds to buy a uh, four wheel vehicle. Yeah. And when they get up and running again and get back into the point out of pre COVID, they offered us another five. Yeah. Uh, oh, nice. Yes, that was for they. Andy specifically said, you know, for all the events we do and go up there, we go to the inner parking lots a lot for the accidents and other things that are going on. And it just it just be a heck of a lot easier to get into some of those things versus trying to fight the traffic in a car. It just mm -hmm. makes it a lot easier from maneuverability wise. So that's what he 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 brought it up, and I said I was all for it. And um, I think if the fairgrounds had been open, we would have had that donation and we would have been moving forward on it. But due to everything going on, it's being held up. Is that going to get a camera too? Uh, it, we can. <laughs> I, I can ask about that. I don't know if uh, it, it can have one. Yes. Weather-wise, I have to make sure that it's 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 mounted the right way and secure and you know. Wouldn't... Game, Pete, we'd have to use a game camera like they use out in the woods. Yeah, I yeah. think so. I don't think that because specifically for our cars, they're specific hard drives and they're in the vehicles. They're not out exposed right. to the weather. So. so um. A question, a uh, follow-up question on the, uh, you know, the executive order and the police reform committee. Um, another item that a lot of the community brought up was additional training, anti-bias training. Um, mm -hmm. And is that something that's captured here? Since we know that needs to happen, is that something that we should budget for? Yeah, so that's in the pay, that that increase is in, is in the current payroll we have in there now with the raises. On um, the implicit bias training, I just sent an email yesterday. The Dutchess County Sheriff's Office has just sent an email to all agencies, so I sent them a list of everybody we had, and that's going to start in the next month or two. So, and then as of right now, those are currently right now they're eight-hour courses. So yes, uh, the training you see in our budget line, that's always every year we have enough in there to cover the different training. Now, I, I think Vanessa's question is, are we covering the cost of yeah. the actual training and that that training, Vanessa, yeah. is being funded by the county? Well, yeah. We, we no. got so, to pay for the time, I thought, Pete. Correct. We pay for the time. The only thing that I haven't done yet is when Officer Wilson starts teaching now that he's certified and he's finishing up tomorrow is that he's he's going to be an instructor. Now, I do have to get an, an intermunicipal agreement between the village of Rhinebeck and Dutchess County, so when he goes and teaches, Dutchess County will reimburse us for his time. That we can get back. The other officers, no, we pay for, and it's in the budget for our own training to go to these classes. Yeah, and that and that's man, that time, it, those classes are mandated for all police. Yes. So the implicit bias is next. This it, March 31st, everybody in the county will be done with the procedural justice. Uh, we will we'll be finished on the 31st. Everybody in our state, our police department will be trained in that. And then the implicit bias starts next. Pete, I'm going to ask you um, a blunt question. Mm -hmm. um, are the classes on these sort of sensitive topics being offered by the county um, good classes? Yes. Yeah, so, so I went on the third. I thought it was a very good class. Um, okay. It was taught by the two lieutenants from the city of Poughkeepsie. Uh, and then there were two officers from the um, town of Poughkeepsie. So the other issue is people are other agencies, bigger agencies are having to get all of their instructors, people certified in this, which is done up at the New York State Police Academy. That's where Officer Wilson went. 
initially to get certified. And now he's going through the other procedural justice training classes now. It was the 10th, 11th, and 12th of this week, so he'll be certified completely. Um, so I, I enjoyed it. I really did. I had a good time. It was a really eye-opening experience. I, I kind of shared some of my stuff with Rick. Um, it, it, it really is about the officers, um, how you work with the community, how every community is different, interaction with the public, um, all the way to an officer's family and everything. They basically, I can brief description is everybody's carrying that backpack with every little rock and boulder in it, whatever they have going on in their own life and, and, and on the job and all the work everybody does and all the different scenarios. So it really was a good I opening it was it was good. I enjoyed it. Everybody, the work groups were good. It's not just sit there and listen. They break you up into six different groups, and then you all had the you had this role playing, which was very good, um, scenario based. So I enjoyed it. I really did. I mean, I've been doing this for 28 years, and sometimes you do go into a class going, okay, here, let me see what this is about. But it really was. It was a good class. I enjoyed it. I think the officers are going to get enough out of it. I think it's an eye-opening experience. Some of the officers already have been saying, well, you know, I, I I do this, but that just opened my eyes to other things. So it's really the communication, how to speak to people, how to work together, how to have that. When we talked about, you know, coffee with a cop or soda with a cop or that kind of stuff, which is what kind of stuff do you want to implement and talk to and get back out on the street and walk around and talk to everybody in your community. And that's really what it's all about is the interaction and, and we have a, a working knowledge and having the community have the same working knowledge of the police department, how it works and all of that. So, I mean, I enjoyed it. I really did. So, so I, Pete, I, did, I also want to let everybody know that every, a lot of people think these are cops teaching cops, which they are, yeah. but the, the basis of the course and the people who are trained and the course certification is by the Department of Criminal Justice, right. not by the police agencies. So, Correct. right. So that's, yeah. So there has been on, on the stakeholder groups and all across the state, people are saying, you know, why are cops teaching cops? Because the state of New York, until they changed that, um, you know, these instructors were certified by the Division of Criminal Justice. So just so you can explain, like my wife's a teacher, just a little explanation is I, in order to become an instructor years ago, New York State said, for you to teach anything in law enforcement, you had to go to instructor developmental school, which is a two week class. So you have to go and you do presentations just like teachers do. So you had to get certified in that first before you could teach anything. So the state of New York signs off on you as being an instructor, a basic topic instructor. After that, then you get certified to teach those different topics, whether it's firearms, whether it's procedural justice, implicit bias, whatever it is, Article 35, which is use of force, you have to have another course on top of that. So on top of the instructor developmental school, which is two weeks, then for you to teach a certain topic, it may be a week or two or three. Uh, for example, when I went to supervisor school, it was a month. I, I went away for a month, and, and when I was done, I had to pass all the tests and do the presentations and all of that. So that's set by the state of New York, and there's reasons for that. Now, if somewhere along the way the state of New York changes that and says, you know, hey, people can come in, whether they have PhDs or doctorates or they're from colleges, a lot of guys can come in and who are former police officers who are certified, um, and they're certified by the state, that's okay. But a lot of people don't understand that that's, the state signs off on all these certifications for people to teach these classes. So. And that's what we sent Jonathan Wilson to as well. Correct. We right. sent Jonathan Wilson away to be trained, right? Correct. To be a, to not, be an instructor. not as a, not trained as a cop, trained as an instructor. Correct. So we we did that, and then and that being is that so down the road when uh, I hire somebody else, and for some reason they didn't have this training, then Jonathan can do the class. I don't have to reach out to the sheriff's office or to other agencies to say, hey, can I beg, borrow, or steal your instructor for this for this topic? So I can do it in house. Uh, thanks, Pete. That's really helpful. Yep. All right. Any other questions on police? All right. Let's yep. move on to general fund. Karen, again, I'm going to ask Pete. you. Thank you, Pete. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. Thank you very much. Can Sorry you see the general it. fund up there? Thank you, Pete. All right. Thanks a lot. Take care. Good night. Good night. Karen, could you talk? Please. Yes. Can you see the general fund spreadsheet? We're still seeing no. Nope. We have police. Still police. Oh, it didn't change it. Okay. Give me just a minute here. Okay. Hi, everybody's faces. <laughs> Hi, <else>? everybody's faces. <laughs> Back to the postage stamp. <laughs> Can you see it now? Yes. yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, 
All right, so I will go through the uh, first um, department is the clerk, deputy clerk, treasurer, um, light items that we share. The uh, first line is the salaries, which is the same percentage breakdown that we um, did last year. I believe it's 25% general, 37.5 water, 37.5 sewer. Um, the next slide item, supplies, um, I think 28 is a 2800 is a good number um, given the past three years. Um, the fees on employees, I'm just going to scroll down a little bit because at the bottom here, it kind of, it we kind of go over some of our contractual expenses that are shared between the general water and sewer fund. We have the enhanced business systems which is our financial software package, our tax program, our water sewer program. We have Time Clock Plus telephone. RBT is our consulting, or our accountants that are consulting accountants. Um, Wells Fargo, our copier, security here, asset management, and general code. Um, we also will use Munistat if we go for bonding. Uh, or any um, even financial planning, they've been they're very helpful and the PCA contract. So these just right. as I'm going through the line items, the these are the items that are broken down. Karen, so just one yeah. question. So the numbers that you showed on there, those are the totals, not the share. Correct. Those are the totals. Totals. Okay. That's the number gets divided. Correct. So, um, and the reason that I went there, because for fees, not employees, we're looking to bring this down to 7,000 um, because the accounting is in there. And we currently account, we currently do the audit for the court out of this line item, the auditor. So um, talking to Gary, we thought it just to keep all the, auditing and accounting in one line item. So instead of putting it with all of our fees and non-employees, non uh, we talked about moving it down to uh, this line item, just the portion, the general fund portion. Okay. Going back to training, training, we didn't spend much because there everything was via Zoom or online. However, I do believe that NICOM is planning on um, having their fall training school so far. And I'd like to keep it at 2000 because I think there's a lot of good opportunities for Martina as the clerk as well to um, join her organizations, her city and village clerks association and the um, NICOM fall training school. Um. Should we talk about more general municipal staff training for some anti-bias work? And does that go here? Um, that would be here. If it was contracted and that would be in this line item. If it was for village, that would be for village staff employees. So. Mm -hmm. Correct, yes. It wouldn't cover all of the other organizations. No, this would be just the portion for the clerk, the deputy clerk, and the treasurer. Right. Uh, what mayor and trustees also? Um, they have their they have a line item for training as well. Oh, a different one. I believe yeah, every department. Okay. We've never used it, Brant, but we have one. <laughs> I mean, say it's like, you know, eight thousand dollars. Then how do we, how do you divvy it up? Like, what's the breakdown? Well, I mean, that's certainly, I mean, for that kind of money, it's certainly worth discussing to put it in the budget because um, we would would definitely need to increase the training in the different departments. Uh, 
we were like weirdly there. enough, I wonder if that's something that we can talk about as part of like the capital expenses and and um, salary and conversation and the staff trainings and the staff training. Yeah, because it sort of cuts across a whole bunch of different departments, and it's a and it's a demonstrable expense, and mm -hmm. I think it's a worthy expense, but it's um, a conversation of its own. Yeah, exactly. But but Vanessa, I, I I mean, at least you're kind of giving me a number, uh, uh, you know, an estimated number to kind of pull all the different line items and I can kind of have that ready for that next discussion. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so again, in the effort to kind of streamline here, um, I'd like to put 1500 in the tax advertising and expenses and kind of just get rid of that printing postage. I think that's just, that's just an old line item that I think we just need to kind of phase out. Right. Um, what this is used for, this is used for um, when Dutchess County prepares our tax roll after we uh, establish our tax rate, um, we send our information to Dutchess County and they prepare a tax roll. Uh, we pretty much streamlined. We only get one tax book and then the rest is uploadable and it just goes right into our uh, tax collection program. So this covers the cost of that. Um, attorney talked about increasing that to 21,000 because um, as you can see, we're at 19,100 already. And so that's the, that's like McCabe and Mac. This is McCabe way. and Mac. This is Rich Olson or whoever, whoever you have from McCabe and Mac that you work with. The, the second line item is the union, the legal services for the union. And again, this one, sometimes you can see sometimes there's a lot and sometimes there's not. We have we've already spent 5,800 this year, but the prior year 1585. The year before 7854. So I think to just keep it at five is is probably a good. Is that is 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 that when we need union legal services, or is that when like the union needs legal services? No, that's when we when we need it. Okay. When so we for, reach out this, to this, them. You know, this, okay. this line item would include all the work that we had to do with building planning and zoning right now, right? right. That all those fees came out of there. Okay, got it. Thank you. As an example. Yep. Um, just one question. If we're going to be at the Police Reform Commission, they have some suggestions um, that may require contractual negotiations. Should we put another thousand dollars in there? That seems I like was hoping we could offset one problem with another issue and then <laughs> stay flat, to be honest with you. Well, it, you also have the option if you're using more more of that and not using as much of that. I mean, you can kind of increase this one from this one if you don't use the um, attorney as much this coming year. and. Maybe call NICOM and right. have NICOM help us because that's a lot of times that's a less expensive way to start some some of these conversations. And the other thing, this would also cover when you go into contract negotiations. Right. That comes out, yeah. of, that comes out of here. If you guys can't um, finish it without using, uh, if you go to arbitration, it'll trigger that, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. You know, the last time we did a contract, we didn't, we didn't, Rick and I, we didn't, we didn't use them at all. Just, just as a final review of our, of our plan. That was to make sure everything was, that was the only time we used them. I, I think in general, our legal fees are really, really inexpensive compared to other municipalities, but that's just the sense I have. I, I don't have any data or facts on that. Yeah, I think just like always keeping in mind that, um, you know, we pay an annual membership to NICOM and that that's a good resource. A lot of times before you, you know, pick up the phone to call the attorney right away. And we don't have the lawyers holding our hands for our meetings anymore, so that's good. 
Right, you call them when you need them. Yeah. So, all right, and we talked about reducing the election to 1500. This year is going to be a little high because we had two elections within one fiscal year because they moved hmm. the election to September. What's the engineer? How does the yeah. engineer with the administration for? Could refresh my memory. Yeah, I think that. you missed that line, Karen. Oh, okay. Yes, no, engineer. Sorry. We just kept it at ten thousand. Why it's here? I'm not sure because. Um, I guess well, it's, it's sort of like this, it's this generalized. This is high right? bond for any village municipality expense. Right. So we had the elevator. Yeah, that was when we were up to 14. Yeah. And that was a different company. So, Karen, I just, I'm just i sorry, I'm going to refresh my memory. So we have a situation where we have a catch basin that um, is over, overflowing. It's going to get... We asked Time Bond to come in and take a look and give us a plan to fix it. Is that coming out of this line or is that going back on highway? That would come out of this line, out of engineering. Okay. Why? It would come out of this line if it's not tied to a, a specific project at this time. Really? Okay. Unless that catch basin top hole, is that going to be really expensive? Yeah, Karen, we we what we've done in the past, we put them against a highway line item, you know, for for the cost of doing the repairs. Okay. If it's specific to that, then yeah. yes. Because if it's a repair, we were putting them under that under the cost of doing repairs. But okay. an, I think a good example of this is uh, Lydia, what you're doing with Time Bond right now for the outdoor Probably dining right. and the and yeah. the twelve hundred dollar expense for the work order for them to do oh, that. Right. Yeah. So that would that, that's an example of what would come out of here. Yeah. And the, the AD, oh no, the ADA thing is separate. Right. Yeah. Well, where's the ADA thing tracked? That it's a past project. It's oh, it's a past project. Okay. It's a past project, yeah. so we really don't have a line. No, no. I think they're talking about the litigation that we're having with uh, with the ADA. Is that right? Yeah. And that's coming out of the attorney line item here. Okay. So, and as well as the engineering cost. Oh, then that is included in here. Right. So we had, so we have over $3,000 in engineering fees and I don't know the total ADA legal fees yet. I haven't added them all up. Okay. Well, that they're, really they're coming out of these two the line table. items, that discussion. Okay. Okay, so um, records management, we don't normally budget here because we um, we uh, would, in the past we've applied for a grant and then the grant would cover it. And this is, rec um, but we did talk about putting 1500 in here for Martina to start working on the laser fish. Sorry. If everybody doesn't know what Laserfish is, Laserfish is the example of Google Docs, except it's for the governmental world. Um, and so it's a system we bought into several years ago. We have the equipment to do it, and you basically can scan and store, dig digitize your information right here from Village Hall, rather than having it collected or sent out like we did before to have it digitized. We paid for Pat to get all the training. We paid for her to be able to um, set this all up and it never she, she never implemented it so now we're really we we have everything and i forget the guy's name karen but anyways he's agreed to do the training again and give us a much a, like a half discount rate for it which is good that's so it's good. bruce cadman from general code that's what it was yep so i think oh. it's it it'll energize that project and and uh and get Martina going on on the laser fish, and that's going to benefit all the departments when we start using that. So th that's that's a mechanism for digitizing hard copies. Correct. Yeah. Right, because if you have it on computer, it's already digitized. Right. Or even right, or even just long term sort long term storage of already electronic records. So it's both. 
Okay. But the scanner, I, I, I thought you were talking about the scanner. The scanner oh, scans yeah. hard copy. I'm sorry. Okay, so in the buildings, meaning the village hall here, um, this goes with the part-time cleaner. We put 11,000 in for that. Um, again, we don't know exactly what that's gonna be, but um, we estimated um, part-time. Um, equipment, we it was 2,500. We like to keep something in here. This is if we needed to buy a door or buy something or, or needed a repair to the village hall. Um, this Paint was, or whatever comes or, out of here. Right, this was the ADA lift just from previous years. So um, supplies, we're able to bring this down to 5,500 just based on what we spent so far. Um, the fees non employees going to increase that to 5500 and fees non employees include. Um, let's see. Include um, the safe co alarm system, Nikom co the Doyle security system, our uh, Welsh sanitation bill comes out of there. Uh, what else? We have Johnson controls. Our Craig pest control comes out of this line item. So um, this has gotten a little bit, a little bit busier than it's been in the past. It's it's taken on more charges. I think um, the security system, pest control, and some things that we did not have to worry about before that we have to pay for now. Um, utilities we're going to keep the same. And then the heating and propane seems to be. Um, we seem to be within a, a, a the last two years seem to be down a little bit, so we're going to. See if we can work into 4500 for that, bring that down to 4500. Repair and maintenance again, we're going to keep that at 3000 because even though we don't have John Romando here, we still may have to have things done. Um, in the village hall around the parking lot. Um, the fuel gas, we're going to keep it at 300 because we use it for some of the um, for the Bobcat and some of the equipment, but we don't need it as high because we don't have that. This was also for John Romando's truck, so we don't have a vehicle here that we need that for. Was so there a discussion of having to rework some of the upstairs offices perhaps? in that space? Um, there was, but we never came to an agreement on how to do that. And it was also bundled in with, if we were to have the court here, <coughs> how we would reconfigure for court, et cetera. Is that what you're referring to? Um, for instance, fire wanted to add more space. <coughs> And then we and then we have to also discuss when we get into staffing, uh, building planning and zoning. If we have enough office spaces to cover that, that's you know, right. So when we get into figuring that plan out, then we got to figure out what we do with people. Okay, yeah, I think that's a good idea. That will go with your staffing discussion. I mean, you can have it now. I'm just giving you my thoughts on it. No, I don't think it's worth having it now. Okay. Um. Moving down to central communication, um, because we were able to redo the website, um, Vanessa and Martina, uh, we're able to remove Dick Wombach out of this line item, so we're able to reduce it by about 5,000. Woohoo! Woohoo! So, yes, so good job. Um, central print, we're going to leave this at 8,000. This is like Pitney Bowes, uh, postage meter, copier printers. Um, data processing, we're going to keep this at 5,000. Um, this, we share the server with the, the town. And a lot of times, you know, if anything comes up, we're kind of responsible for half of the cost. 
um, 8500 this is for our PCA contract and um, that's it that's all I have for right now great <sighs> looks good to me um, so I think we scheduled the 29th for the total budget or uh, the 29th is staffing staffing okay Monday the 29th? May, yes. Yeah, March 29th. Oh, I didn't have that. Six o'clock uh, staffing? Yep. The only okay. other thing, um, Karen, we should talk about tonight just real briefly is um, court. Do you want to just mention the court? Oh, okay. Um, yeah, the reason that we didn't separate out court was because the, it was it was presented exactly the same with the only change to the 1.5 percent or what whatever the um whatever the rate the salary is going to be okay. uh, um gary are, are we is would the hiring of a prosecutor be part of the personnel discussion no. Sorry, we're hiring yeah, a good, prosecutor no that wouldn't be personnel that'd be something that'd be a contract services yeah. Okay. I haven't heard this discussion. It hasn't really started. <laughs> so. Okay. It came. It came up during the police reform committee grant. Of. Uh, most of the municipalities don't, you know, are hiring going to hiring a, you know, a special prosecutor, like the town has. Terry uh, yeah. since yeah, Terry something, you know, um, and it was recommended by. Um, the public defender that we should also consider it. Hmm. Or the public Wait. defender wanted to uh, prosecute. Tom, what, Tom, Tom, what was Tom's <laughs> title? It's public defender. Yeah, it's public defender. Yeah. And he wanted a prosecutor. Oh, yeah. he wants someone to argue with. He's He's not he, you know, you got to remember, he was a he wasn't playing lawyer. He was playing committee person on on our police right. report. Okay. Um. All right, so that's it. Any questions? Wow. Oh, we don't. So we're not going to do building and planning. Or are we just going to save that for staffing? Yeah, I thought we, Lydia, the way we thought that we, how would we be able to even discuss that until we got through a yeah. staffing plan and figured what, who, who, what, where, and when, right? Yeah, zero. Yeah. <laughs> we had that discussion. Other than like a few grand in miscellaneous fees. Yeah. So as long as you guys are comfortable with. The miscellaneous yeah. fees not happening tonight. Let's t let's save that conversation for later. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Great. Because that's going to be really the big one that we have to tackle when we get into that. Yep. Because it oh, yeah. it, it's going to involve. We know that we you know somebody gave away the vehicle. We no longer have a vehicle for it. We no longer have office space for it. You know, whatever the plan is, we got to. It's it's a big discussion. Yep. 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 Could you? When was the vehicle given away? I don't. I don't remember that part. So. Or we can talk was, about then. <laughs> John had a little pickup truck. Uh huh. Yeah, right there. The the little pickup truck started out with water, and then it was given to John, and then it was given to Highway. And so the question is, you know. I mean, this is all part of like whether or not we need, whether or not we're going to have like a superintendent of public works. This is a whole big question around whether or not we're going to have someone, you know, we don't know the answer to any of these questions <laughs> until we have some resolution on some of these questions, it's like the best way I know how to describe it without being blunt. Um, so, yeah. All right. Cool. Okay. Sounds good to me. So hopefully we'll tee that conversation up for the 29th, right? Yeah, I don't know how much more we're going to know then, but yeah. I know. Right, that's going to be. Yeah. But we but have, at least we, we have to at have least the we first can... plan of this. Sorry, we have to have the first plan of this done by April 15th, Karen. Mm -hmm. So we have to have the rough plan documented by April 15th. It doesn't. Well, it's not the final plan. It's the plan that basically says here's here's our first draft. 
Well, well, right. We have to have the public hearing. We're having the public hearing, I think, at our meeting on the 13th. Yes, that's right, on the 13th. Okay. Should we have like two scenarios or something? We can create one. I'm happy to create one. Because I mean, right now we're still doing double duty and we don't know how long we're going to be doing double duty. So there's that too. You're talking well, we about building plan and zoning, is, that, it, Vanessa? is that what you meant? Sorry, what, Gary? You're talking about uh, two scenarios for building planning and zoning and DPW. Yeah. Yeah, I think we're going to have to have several scenarios, whatever. Rick and Rick and Lydia were tasked to come up with this with the concept. Uh, Lydia tagged out and put Rick and Brant in charge of it because oh. <clears throat> Rick and Brant are in charge of those two departments, three departments. Okay. Well, you yeah. were building planning and zoning. Well, yeah, but oh, well, I'm happy to stay as part of it, but you know, highway and water and wa wastewater were all like, we don't need a DPW person. Well, that's DPW. Yeah, they're doing DPW. But oh, okay. Who's doing you? You? I thought you and Rick. Rick was running DPW. You were running building planning and zoning, but they kind of wedged together because they were one person. Right. Yeah. If you want more people engaged in that, that's totally fine. I don't care. No. Okay. Yeah. No, I don't. I mean, like, unless anyone wants to jump in with me, I'm thinking about building, planning, and zoning. Feel free, but like, I've, 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 I know what I want to do. So, well, again, my assumption is there's going to be some end to this in two or three months. Yeah. One hopes. That's my, so, that's but, my assumption too. And then I still know what I want to do. Two months brings us to a new fiscal year. Yep. And so like, everything. And if fine. this is all resolved, I know exactly what I want to do. So. And. Okay. You, you know exactly what you want to do. I do. Um, and we can have that conversation in executive session. <laughs> okay. so, do you want to go into executive session? Do you guys now? want to do it now? I could. No, it's I'm just not me. ready. I can that. leave. I'm not ready. No, 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 no. Let's let's have it some other time. So, Brant, you and I need to have a conversation about what we think the needs of our various departments are. I think we need yeah. to sit down and do that. That's fine. Yeah. Definitely. Okay. Do you, thank you, Karen. Do you need a, a I motion? Make, I want to make a motion to adjourn the budget workshop. Second. All in favor, raise a hand, say aye. 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 Okay. okay. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Just, thank hey, you reach out. If any of you have any questions, as all this starts to come together, just please reach out and let me know. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye.